On Saturday, September 28th, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk stood in front of an audience in Boca Chica, Texas, and presented the fully assembled SpaceX Starship, 50 meters tall and made from shiny stainless steel. As part of his presentation, Musk showed off the history of the company's developments so far and gave us an updated view of what Starship and its first stage super heavy booster will look like when they're fully operational. It was actually a pretty short presentation and there weren't a lot of details, but he stuck around and answered questions from many space journalists and we've got a much better idea about Starship and what happens next. In his presentation, Musk described the promise of Starship in comparison to every other vehicle out there from cars to airplanes. The critical breakthrough that's needed for us to become a space-bearing civilization is to make space travel like air travel. When you fly an airplane, you don't throw the whole thing away after you reach your destination. It gets refueled, other passengers come aboard, and the airplane flies to another destination. But doing this with rocketry has always been a challenge. Nobody has been able to make any rocket capable of reaching orbit and back with full reuse, needing only maintenance and refueling. In fact, as Musk stated in his presentation, the laws of physics nearly prohibit it. If the pull of the Earth's gravity was much stronger, it would be truly impossible to develop a fully reusable rocket using existing chemical rocket technology. With the math saying that a fully reusable rocket technology should be theoretically possible, SpaceX has been working to develop an actual prototype that can fly to orbit and return. It's gone through several iterations from the original interplanetary transport system to the BFR to the modern Starship and Super Heavy Booster. And if all goes well, this huge rocket will blast off in just a couple of months, fly to an altitude of 20 kilometers, and return to its landing pad. So let's talk about recent developments, what's new, what's different, and what happens next. The fully assembled Starship orbital prototype reaches a height of 50 meters or about 165 feet tall. The rocket is now made of stainless steel, which is actually a significant departure from the carbon fiber that SpaceX originally planned to use. Part of this is because stainless steel is much cheaper to use and easier to work with. It's $130,000 a ton for the carbon fiber and $2,500 a ton for the steel. So the steel is about 2% of the cost of the carbon fiber. So this is a good thing we changed from carbon fiber to steel, uh, by far. In fact, SpaceX was going down the carbon fiber route until October of 2018, before they decided to change direction. Stainless steel is also easy to work with. The rocket was welded outside without a factory, often in the rain. And if Martian colonists need building materials, they can just cut up a starship and use it for other things. But the biggest benefit, according to Musk, is how well it deals with the heat of re-entry back into the Earth's atmosphere after being in the cold of space. When a spacecraft comes back from orbit, it's traveling at 28,000 kilometers per hour. When it hits the denser part of the atmosphere, stainless steel doesn't become brittle in the cold of space, and it can reach 1,500 degrees Celsius before it starts to melt. According to Musk, no heat shield at all is required on the leeward side of the rocket, the part facing away from the heat of reentry. On the windward side, they're planning to use reusable ceramic heat shield tiles in the areas that experience the highest temperatures. It's this reentry from orbit that has led to the overall design changes of the Starship. From its original design several years ago, the spacecraft now has two wings at the bottom and top, which allow it to belly flop into the atmosphere like a skydiver, bleeding off as much velocity as possible. Then, once it is slowed down enough, Starship will use its maneuvering thrusters to kick the tail around and then it'll make a propulsive landing. The completed Starship will have a dry mass of approximately 120 tons and weigh 150 tons fully loaded. It'll have six of the methane-fueled Raptor engines on board. And just one of these engines was attached to the bottom of the Starhopper prototype, which flew to a height of 150 meters last month in Boca Chica. To actually reach orbit, Starship will be stacked on top of the Super Heavy booster, lifting off from an elevated platform. 
The booster and Starship will land on pads near the launch platform and be stacked up again rapidly, potentially several times a day. It's amazing to think how far Starship has already come. In the four years since the concept of the interplanetary transport system was first announced, we've seen the launch of Falcon Heavy and the landing of all three stages. Propulsive landings by Falcon are commonplace. But to really drive the point home, there's actually a 50 meter stainless steel prototype rocket right there in Texas. Things are getting real, but what comes next? We'll talk about that in a second, but first I'd like to thank Christopher Jones, James Milner, Trent Strong, Derivius, and the rest of our 833 patrons for their generous support. Educational content should be freely available to anyone in the world, and the patrons make this possible. Join our community at patreon.com slash universe today and get in on the action. Of course, Starship is only half the rocket stack that'll eventually fly to the moon and onto Mars. Musk also provided an update on the first stage, known as the Super Heavy, which will also be fully reusable, like a scaled-up version of the Falcon 9 booster. Musk anticipates that it will have twice as much thrust as a Saturn V, using 37 Raptor engines, a few will gimbal, providing the ability to change direction and the rest will be locked in place. In a follow-up question, Musk laid out what he expects the timeline will be. He anticipates things to move very fast. In one to two months, the Starship Mark I will make its flight to 20 kilometers. Mark II is being constructed in Florida now and should be completed within a couple of months. Mark III should be done in about three months. Mark IV, done in four months. We are going to be building ships and boosters at both Boca and the Cape as fast as we can. Um, and, and, and each successive, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, it's going to be really nutty to see a bunch of these things. I mean, not just one, but a whole stack of them. It'll be Mark 4 or 5 that actually goes into orbit, ideally within about six months. Once the first two starships are completed at both Boca and the Cape, SpaceX will begin construction of the super heavy first stage booster. The limiting factor is actually supplying all the Raptor engines to launch, with each one needing at least 24 and as many as 37. Musk anticipates they'll need about 200 Raptor engines in total for a super heavy booster in both Florida and Texas, as well as a couple of starships at both spaceports. Raptors will be coming off the assembly line every few days. Then, they plan to scale up, building multiple Super Heavy boosters and starships at both locations as quickly as they can, improving their design and manufacturing exponentially. Although it'll be a massive effort, less than 5% of the company is actually working on Starship, with everyone else fulfilling their commitments with Falcon and Dragon. While Mark 1 and 2 were built in sections, stacked on top of one another, their plan for Mark 3 is to take the rolls of stainless steel, the diameter Starship, and then just do a single weld from top to bottom like a zipper. What about crewed missions? Musk hopes that the first humans will climb aboard a Starship in either Boca Chica, Texas, or Cape Canaveral, Florida in 2020. And this is because the complete reusability of the rocket allows them to test out safety in each Starship super heavy stack in a matter of days. You can fly the booster 20 times a day, you fly the ship, three or four times a day. That's what I mean by reusability. A fleet of 10 starships could launch more mass into orbit than a thousand times the current capabilities of the world's rockets combined. The long-term strategy, of course, is to fly to the moon, Mars, and other destinations in the solar system, maybe even the outer planets. Here's Starship at Saturn. According to Musk, as long as you have some kind of propellant plant on your destination, Starship can blast off and return to Earth without a first stage, using the Earth's atmosphere to slow down. The first Starship sent to other worlds would be uncrewed, demonstrating the ability to manufacture the fuel needed for the return journey. And as we've mentioned in previous episodes, the key to reaching other destinations will be orbital refueling. For each Starship that flies to another world, there will be multiple tanker launches that will transfer propellant giving the Starship enough fuel to make the journey. Of course, SpaceX will need to master the techniques of orbital refueling, and we did a whole video on this, which I'll link at the end. At the end of his presentation, Musk talked about our place in the universe. As far as we know, 
We are the only consciousness or the only life that's out there. There might be other life, but we've seen no signs of it. The window has opened for life to spread out into the cosmos, but there are existential threats like self-destruction and natural disasters that could shut that window again. And a few hundred million years from now, as the sun gets hotter and hotter, boiling the oceans on Earth, that window closes for good. This is our chance to become a true spacefaring civilization. Now, I don't know about you, but my head is spinning. Like, is this all actually going to happen? Elon Musk's deadlines are aspirational. And in my experience, covering SpaceX for 17 years of its existence, things take longer than we expect. But Falcon Heavy flies, and we've seen Starhopper successfully demonstrate the reality of the Raptor engine and its ability to make a water tower soar through the air. There's 50 meters of Raptor-powered stainless steel stacked up in Boca Chica, Texas, and it's almost ready to fly. It's only going to be a couple of months now for the next tests and eventually orbital flights. No matter what happens, we won't have to wait long to find out. What do you think? Let's hear your guess. What day do you think Starship will hop to 20 kilometers? What day do you think it will make it to orbit? And what day will humans first fly to space on the system? Let me know your predictions in the comments. Here are the names of the patrons who support us at the $10 level and more. Want to see your name here and support the work we do? Go to patreon.com slash universe today. Once a week, I gather up all my space news into a single email newsletter and send it out. It's got pictures, brief highlights about the story, and links so you can find out more. Go to universetoday.com slash newsletter to sign up. Did you know that all of my videos are also available in a handy audio podcast format? So you have the latest episodes as well as special bonus material like interviews with me show up right on your audio device. Go to universetoday.com slash audio or search for Universe Today on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. And I'll put a link in the show notes. Want to learn more about orbital refueling? We did a whole video that goes into what this will take in great detail in another video, including the plans for Starship, as well as other ideas by Lockheed Martin and practical tests by NASA.